Welcome back to Rick's 1 through 5th Scale Models. My name is Rick. Today I'm going to be doing part 3 of my build of the Best Bid 1 35th Scale Eagle 4. Now, this is one of their first 1 35th Scale models. It's an outstanding kit as I've talked about in the prior videos. And it was even more fun to do the painting and weathering, which is what this video is going to be about. And in the first video, I talked about just the model, the plastic, and those parts. And then in part 2, I built the model. And then, as I said, this is part three. We're going to talk about painting, weathering, and uh, finishing out the model, which you can see here. Now, the plan was to do a Bundeswehr German Army deployment in late Afghanistan vehicle. And I did a lot of research. I looked at a lot of pictures. And this model is based on actual pictures I found. Um, I do have the Facebook page. And I did get some people you know, pointing out things that I had done wrong and then asking questions. Everything I've done on this was based on pictures and information I could obtain. So it's as authentic as I can get. If I did make a mistake, I apologize. You know, the goal was to honor the deployment and the vehicle and not do some fantasy type build. But let's move forward into the actual project itself and talk about the painting process. So prior to doing any of the painting, I primed the whole vehicle and uh, Mr. Hobby's Mr. Finish Surfacer 1500 Gray. I find this to be a real good base to do all the painting. From there, I started using the NATO Green to paint the interior parts. Now, there's several colors in here. You've got the green perimeter, you've got a gray, you have black, and then you have this tan, uh, kind of a brownish tan color on the uh, panels. So I started doing the whole process of painting all those different interior details. Uh, the model has quite a lot of details so it took quite a while to accomplish all this. And you can see the uh, different interior parts. Uh, unfortunately though a lot of this hand painting because of the flat surfaces took a couple of coats with lots of little details. But it's the enjoyable part of creating all the depth and detail. Uh, the painting is definitely an important part to all this. Now for the big tan, uh, like I said, a brownish tan, I uh, used uh, a tan paint and used the airbrush uh, really carefully and up close to get all the details painted. This, because they're all big flat surfaces, worked out a lot better for the uh, overall finished look. A lot more clarity, a smoother coat where the uh, you would get the brush strokes. A large portion of the interior has this uh, paneling that looks like it's some kind of a ballistic protection or something probably uh, but I had to go through and get that all painted and along with the back area of the vehicle. From there I was back to doing the hand paint to clean up all the edges and make everything look a lot nicer. Uh, once again this is just a slow tedious process of taking your time to paint. Uh, a lot of this won't really be that visible, but I'll know it's there, so I definitely wanted to do it right in the uh, overall scheme of things. Once I got done with the green parts and the tan, I started working on all the black details. And like I said, the main colors inside are going to be the uh, NATO green, a uh, kind of a brownish wood tan, and then a flat black. Uh, from there, there are some handles and different straps to paint in their various colors. On the perimeter of the vehicle, along the edge of all the doors, you can see this uh, gray line. Uh, so I went through and just hand painted that. There's no details on the model for what that is. Uh, so like I said, it was just a matter of painting it so it was visibly uh, created that way. And this is one of those processes of just kind of working through the lines making sure they all look fairly accurate and uh, to scale. and Definitely a small brush and delicate painting time. So 
So there's several nylon straps inside the vehicle. This is kind of a mustardy colored nylon. Uh, so what I did is I used a uh, kind of a mustard color to do them. There's one on each door and then one above each door. Here I'm going through the process of painting all the uh, interiors of the roof. You've got your hatch access point, which is uh, trimmed in black, and then it's got a, a NATO green interior, and then it's got the two straps in the uh, center area of it, along with the locking mechanism that's uh, also of the NATO green color. What's nice about this is there's a lot of good pictures online, but I also have Tanko Grad's book on the Eagle 4, which had great interior pictures, which really helped me to get the colors as accurate as possible. So on the seat belts, and there's uh, two handles for equipment racks above the driver and right front seat. Uh, there's a red quick release straps and uh, pull points. I painted those on the seat belts and then uh, painted the ones on the roof. Now these are kit, these are parts that I added on after because they aren't part of the model, but when you look at the real vehicle, there's those straps there to access those points, the big zippers. So I painted it with uh, a gloss clear and then started doing the decal installation. There's quite a few decals for different points. Uh, the computer screens and the radios and dash have uh, separate decals. Once I got all the decals installed, I sealed it with a flat clear and then used a gloss clear over the screens to make them shiny as they would really be. And then it was time to seal the interior up and uh, start on the outside. Before I could seal it, I had to install the windows. The kit comes with some nice decals to uh, cover the windows on the exterior. So I utilized those and then uh, started the painting process. Now the paints I'm going to use to paint the exterior are AK's real colors. And for the main color of the vehicle is this uh, kind of a sand tan, which is sand beige in RAL 1039. F9, and that's the actual color that they main, mainly paint the vehicles. Once this color was done, and uh, with this paint, you've got to kind of hit it multiple times. It it sprays nice. Uh, it's got great accuracy, uh, but you've got to kind of hit it a couple times to get a good solid coating. Uh, after I did this color, I then started doing the camo pattern, and uh, first started with the sand brawn which is a uh, kind of a brownish color. And then from there did the uh, Hilo Olive, which is a light olive color. Uh, this uh, is a very specific pattern and takes a little bit of time to get painted, but uh, it, the model itself has real good pictures of the actual correct pattern. So I was able to copy it nicely. So once I completed adding all the paint, I hit it with a gloss clear to start the decal installation and then started going through and adding all the different decals. One of the things you'll notice here is, is I've done some of the hand painting on like the uh, gun on the roof and the Explorer 727 system along with the smoke launchers. Uh, it wasn't a lot of touch up painting, but there a little bit of process there. Um, Once I had the decals all installed and they had uh, cured overnight, I followed up with a nice clear flat. I used the Tamiya clear flat to seal everything up. I gave it a real good liberal coat to really douse everything and uh, flatten it all out nicely. Uh, this does two things. It takes off all the shines and makes it look more accurate, but it also has a real good sealer. Now I still have the windows covered 
because I didn't want to mess up their nice clean shininess. But I did have some plans after I finished this to make them look a little more realistic. After I let the clear dry for 24 hours, I started the weathering process. Now right here we have the nice pristine, brand new, right off the boat looking uh, deployment, but that's not accurate. So what I used is the oils to create little dots all over the model and then use enamel thinner to basically pull these down to create the streaks and natural weathering you would see. Now I'm using uh, a combination of grays, a couple different shades of grays, a little bit of a red for rust, uh, just in a few spots, and then um, kind of a whitish gray to create more of that uh, sun uh, weathering look. Uh, this is one of those things I really enjoy doing, and it's a lot of people overdo it. I try not to overdo it. I think that looks more, more realistic, uh, but you'll see here shortly kind of what I'm talking about. So the whole idea here is to uh, get the brush nice and damp and then pull down. And as you pull and keep pulling, you basically keep continuing to thin the paint and uh, create that look. It will look a little heavier until it dries. And then after it dries, it uh, kind of balances out. Uh, what I like about it is, is you, you put it on, you can just keep working it until it goes away. If you end up overdoing it, you can reactivate the paint uh, with the enamel thinner and uh, either remove it completely or pull it. Also, I'm doing here a little bit of the uh, technique that I'm absolutely blanking on the term for, but basically what you do is you get a little bit of a uh, color, uh, usually like a black or a white, and then you highlight the different edges, and then you come back with a dry brush and kind of clean it up a little bit so it looks nice and highlighted. Uh, I like doing this technique, especially on the roof, to highlight all the seams and welds and different things like that. Now, underneath the vehicle, I didn't do a lot of the real heavy detailed paint because my intent was to make it look real dusty. So uh, what I had done there is used a uh, sand acrylic paint and just lightly sprayed it to dust it all. And I'm continuing that here, but a lot lighter. And it's just a little highlight to give it kind of a dusting effect. Now, on the tires, I wanted to give them a really realistic look. So that meant uh, putting a, enamel paint into all the grooves and then wiping off the parts of the tire that touch the ground. So here, even though it's a lot of it's off camera, that's what I'm doing. Um, from there, I'm going to follow up with my pastel chalks and start the process of uh, weathering it up that way to kind of finish and blend everything together nicely. And here I'm starting with the uh, chalk. Now, the idea here is to uh, kind of hit it and then wipe it off. Um, if you hit it with enamel uh, thinner, it will activate it and it, it'll go from uh, powder to a paint. So you have to be real careful there. But the idea is to you know create that dusted effect. Uh, I really like this product. Uh, this is another uh, Mr. Hobby product that works really nicely. It's called uh, Mr. Hobby Weathering Pastel. So they have three different main colors, kind of a yellowish tan, uh, more of an orangish tan, and a brown. These are the main colors that I use. Uh, I find them to be very uh, accurate as far as the uh, dusting effect. You can see here I'm using kind of the yellowish one. Uh, I think that does a good job to blend. I'm using a real soft brush to just, you know, hit it with it and then wipe a lot of it off so it just kind of highlights and creates that lower end dusty look. Uh, if you look at how vehicles get dusty, depending on the wind flow, uh, certain parts of the vehicle will collect it more than others, uh, especially like on the hood and that right by the windshield area and then on the roof areas, those types of spots. Once that's done, I then follow it up with one more sealer coat. This is, again, a flat acrylic Tamiya. Uh, I really hit it liberally, and that really seals everything up. It also kind of adheres. One of the things you'll notice when you do this is the, uh, the pastel powders will kind of 
deteriorate a little bit and not be so prevalent. So uh, sometimes you'll notice after you do it and seal it, it's not as uh, obvious and nice looking. So you may have to come back and hit it again. But what's nice is the flat creates a really good surface for the uh, pastel to stick to. Now I removed all the window decals and then I wanted to create the uh, grimy look of a windshield when they've used the windshield wipers to clean it off. So what I did is I just took tape and cut it in little arcs to simulate the windshield wiper arc and then stuck it back to the vehicle and then used the Tamiya flat acrylic and just lightly sprayed over the windshield area that was still exposed. Uh, this immediately dulls it and takes the shine off and creates that hazy look that you would see. Uh, after uh, removing the tape, one of the things I noticed is it wasn't quite right. So I did some adjustments and uh, put another piece of tape on. You'll kind of notice on the, would be the right side of the vehicle there, it's not quite a nice good arc. So I uh, tried a couple different ways to fix it and uh, nothing really worked. So like I said, the best way was to just retape it and uh, spray it again. What's nice about this, you'll see shortly, is it's really easy to wipe it off uh, even after it dries because it doesn't stick real good on the windshield because uh, there's no primer there and it's such a smooth surface. So you can just take a Q-tip and uh, basically scrap, scratch it off and uh, create your nice little perfect angle. But that was that. So one of the things I noticed on all these vehicles is they had uh, tow cables or tow straps uh, tied to the fronts of them. Um, there was a couple different types. I initially tried to simulate the tan one that has a strap inside with a, a covering on the outside and, and I really could not recreate that accurately to where I felt comfortable with it. But I had seen another one which was this blue strap similar to this uh, elastic cord I'm using. Now what I did is I put it in paint and and then pulled it out with my fingertips squeezing all the paint out and uh, then I let it dry and after that while that was drying I went back and started doing all the white painting for all the reflectors because what I do is I'll paint them white and then I'll paint over them with whatever color they are and I, that seems to give a nice realistic look I think. Here I'm going through, I uh, did the turn signals and the headlights and the different running lights that the vehicle has. Now some of these are painted or taped over. Uh, at, at a later date here you'll see me, I'm going to go through and kind of paint over them to create that taped look. But initially I'm doing them as if they're totally exposed. Now the next stage after I've let the white dry is I hit it with just a little bit of silver to give it that little bit of a, a silvery look inside you always would see with the reflectors and turn signals. Uh, it's kind of a multi-staged process, but like I said, I, I, I find these results to be the most accurate and nice looking. Uh, it takes a little bit of time, uh, but once again, it's all in the results. From there I painted the turn signals and uh, brake lights, the red and yellow. And I painted them on the inside so that once they're glued in it looks more realistic. Now here's the big brain surgeon moment I have here. Uh, what I was going to do was attach those and use a shrinking tube. But in the process I didn't even realize that the heat would bend the plastic. So I ended up breaking this part and had to go in and after the fact and fix it. Uh, but uh, a little bit angry at myself, but kind of learned the hard way on that one. So one of the things you'll notice that uh, a couple different militaries do it, but the Bundeswehr is, is pretty predictable. Uh, they'll have these water bottles 
that are upside down tied to different points on the vehicle. I noticed that on these, they had them on the antennas on different points, but they seem to be most common on the, the rear view mirror. And what they do is they put the infrared uh, night uh, glow sticks in there uh, so that they can uh, see with the ultraviolet and things like that. But that's what that's for. After that, I started installing all the uh, clear parts that I had painted, uh, the turn signals and different markers and that. I'm using uh, the uh, clear uh, like canopy paint, which uh, it doesn't melt it or cause any distortions in it and uh, gives you the best results. I uh, continued working on the rest of them, put the back ones on. Uh, the only thing left to do was to add the uh, rear view mirror lenses. Uh, this model is one of these models that has a nice reflective part that you uh, self adheres. I added those and then I was done with the build. So, anyway, that's it. That's the build. That's the uh, overall finished product. At the end of this video, I'm going to have a bunch of still pictures of it close up. For a little better examination so you get an idea of the uh, what I did and how I did it. Um, I also have future videos coming out on the AFV M42 duster I did in a West German version here. The neat thing about this is I used ICM's paint. I like this product. I'm going to do a review on it when I did this paint project and talk about this product and uh, the overall quality of it. Also, I have uh, done the Das Werks M48 bridge. I've got a video coming out on that quite uh, shortly. I'm in the middle of finishing up my Canadian Leopard 2A4M Canadian. Uh, I'm doing the Barracuda armor and scratching that all out on the model. That's a, a quite an interesting project. Um, I also have several models I purchased that I have to build, do reviews on, and all the process. One would be something I've been looking forward to is the ICM Unimog radio truck that's coming out. I also was able to get a hold of one of these several weeks ago. Um, it's not German, but it's a really neat model, and I'm going to do the build and the painting of that. Uh, then I have my Das Werks Lark, uh, another neat little model. I'm glad that they did this in a German version. Uh, that's a West German, actually. And then Last but not least, something I've been looking forward to, which has been a real bigger project, is the Patriot in the German version. And this is a really nice looking model. I'm going to do a review on the model and then the build. This is a huge kit, lots of parts, great quality. Uh, I'm looking forward to starting that. But anyway, that's my stuff. Please, everyone, like, subscribe. Comments and questions, always welcome. If you want to know something, ask. If you don't like something or disagree with something, please let me know. Uh, if you don't like it especially, let me know. That just helps me be a better modeler and YouTuber. Anyway, everyone take care. Happy modeling and talk to you on the next one. Bye-bye.